Get it one, be Asian down here. Today we're gonna to look into the Lenovo T490 Ultrabook. Now this is a 14 inch notebook and it is made for the business sector there. So it is made to be quite rugged there. So it can take a fair bit of abuse and also a bit of spills. I don't suggest the spills, but it can take a fair bit of abuse there. You'll find these computers running around quite a lot in the business sector, quite simply because they're actually quite versatile and you can actually configure a whole bunch of range with this notebook here. And, and also the cost is quite low as well too, which is great for all businesses. Anyway, so let's start going on with how this can be configured. So let's start off the CPU. Now with the CPU wise, you can, these dudes can be housed with an eighth generation Intel processor, an i5 or an i7 version. And again, those are four cores. And in some countries, unfortunately not in Europe at the moment, but you, you need to check in your countries as well. They can house a 10th generation Intel i5 or i7, again, four cores as well. Now, as for RAM wise, it's actually quite an interesting story there. So it starts with eight gigs of soldered RAM. You can opt in up to 16 gigs of soldered RAM on this, and they do provide one slot for RAM slots for upgrades, which is great. And with the 16 gig soldered RAM and plus the one RAM slot, you can go up to a total of maximum of 48 gigs. That's pretty sweet because that can give you a good coverage of a lot of applications in one certain business. So that's actually quite nice. This actually can do 48 gigs of RAM. As for the graphics wise, it is using the Intel graphics. Um, you can configure it with a GeForce MX 250 in there so that's good if you want a discrete graphics and as for the hard drive it does go up to one terabyte of ssd now it does use the pcime m.2 format i don't see much these days sada much these days and it's just to do with real estate of the computer and also we this ssd have come down a lot in price so actually we just use that because it's a lot quicker there to deal with anyway so as for screen options, there's actually quite a number of them. So let's start off with the most interesting one there, which is the HD option. Now the HD option does use the TN technology. I had a viewer who actually was requesting for TN technology because it's actually helped with their eye strain. Um, so that's where their weapon of choice. And for the TN technology one, it is running at 220 nits of brightness. Now, as for the or the full HD and WQ versions that are using the IPS technology there. So next up is the full HD option. Now you can get a touch and non-touch version. Now the non-touch version, you're looking at 250 nits of brightness and the touch version, you're looking at 300 nits of brightness. Now that's enough to go outside and you can probably still work on it. It might have strained a little bit, but you're still doing pretty good there, even with the 300 nits of brightness. Now, they do have a privacy guard version as well, and that's basically just to bring the viewing angle to quite a little amount, so it's really for the user who is actually using in front of it. And that one runs at 400 nits of brightness there. Same with the low power mode as well. There is a low power mode, and that one's 400 nits of brightness as well. Now, they do have a wide quad HD version. Now, the wide quad HD version runs at 500 nits, so it's quite bright, and it does have a glass, glossy sort of looking feel to it, whereas all the others are sort of matte looking type there. Now with the wide quad HD version, it doesn't have touch unfortunately, so it is a non-touch version. Now this particular model of screen, I do have the touch screen version of full HD, so, and I find it's quite nice to use and has a nice feel to it, even when you put your fingers over it as well too, so a very nice sort of feel to it. Let's have a look at the ports here. Now starting on the right hand side, we have the optional smart card reader here. We've got the USB 3.1 Gen 1, now this can be configured to have always on. And we've got the exhaust hole here. We've got the RJ45 Ethernet port. We've got the security port here. And looking around along the back here, we have the optional USIM for SIM cards. Now if we swing around to the left hand side here, we have the USB C, which is 3.1 Gen 1, so this one can also do power delivery and also display. And we have the Thunderbolt port here, again can do power delivery and display. 
and then we've got the Lenovo Ethernet dongle port here and then we have another USB 3.1 port Gen 1 and then we have the HDMI 1.4B we have a audio combo jack and last but not least the micro SD card reader so moving on to the next area is the webcam so it does have a 720p webcam here and they do include a nice privacy shutter I love that about Lenovo and it's just a matter of using a little finger on top and you pretty much can just give it a nice little flick you will see go red which means the actual shutter is closing over the webcam so no one can really spy on you or accidentally turn it on now as for the keyboard why it is a Lenovo ThinkPad they're really good keyboards they can take a fair bit of breathings and you will like it you most than likely so these are a little bit different to the X series for these ones so they've got a little bit more rougher feel to the surface there um, they have quite nice trouble again with it and if you're used to Lenovo keyboards this is no exception to it so very nice thing there. The one thing I do like to make note of if you don't, are new to Lenovo, they do have this interesting function where they have a function key and the control key swapped around. Now I have made a video about how to swap these in BIOS. You can also do this in the software under the keyboard software and you need to go control panel once you've installed that software and then you can actually do the flip in the software itself if you find this actually quite annoying in that sort of sense or not just not used to it so you can change that configuration there and as of course as always with the thinkpads they do have a little track point in the middle there for the old time user who still currently use that it's more of the people who were touch typers back in the days where they were using the mouse there and that was actually their mouse to make it easier so they didn't have to lift the fingers up there and again right below the keyboard you will see three buttons that's for the mouse clicks for the track point if you're using that now as for the trackpad it is quite large and has a very nice feel to it it's got a bit of a rougher feel to it but it will do you fine and it just keeps going and going as well too and it is a mechanical one so you can feel it when you do press it which is fantastic and right next to the trackpad is the optional fingerprint reader as for sound wise it does have speakers which are above the keyboard you'll find and they are two two watts speakers there now when i did my testing i managed to pull a peak of 90 decibels out of them so it's quite loud but as for the actual sound quality they're pretty average i wouldn't say they're amazing they'll do their job well um, they're not really bassy but they will do their job now you can find more information and specs and also what can be configured on this t49 computer I'll put in a link in the description below and you'll see also this little link right down here as well too and if you like that give me a thumbs up before this video would be fantastic to support me as well now the t49 does come with a 65 watt power adapter there now the actual battery does support rapid charge so you can charge the battery from 0 to 80 percent up in one hour's time as for the battery life I put the computer in performance level, I'll dial the CPU up to 100% level and I managed to pull two and a half hours out of the battery there. Now as for the battery saving mode and doing what I can to save as well, you're looking at just under seven hours there. So realistically the battery life is anywhere between two and a half to seven hours. So it's pretty decent there to actually work off. So let's test out how easy it is to lift the lid with one finger. Now, looks to be quite, got a fair bit of friction there for it. So it's not that simple to actually use one finger to lift the lid, which is actually quite good for business because sometimes you don't want that lid to all really make it easy to lift up. So when I did the performance and stress test of this computer, I did take note of the temperatures of this computer and how loud it was. So my testing method was pretty much just a food for my time. That's all I got. And I downloaded a decibel meter on my mobile phone, put it 10 centimeters away, and I touched the food for my time at the hottest part of the computer and let it equalize around about five minutes, then took a reading there. So what I actually managed to do was find out where the heat was on the keyboard. So the hottest part of the keyboard I found was between the R, Y, C, and B key. That's probably the hottest part. Right after that is probably the exhaust fan, of course, 
uh, which is located on the right hand side so but you don't normally touch that you mostly just touch the keyboard and down here as well so running the cpu at 100 percent after two hours my food thermometer managed to pull 37.1 degrees celsius and my decibel meter was 50 decibels so that's not bad when it, the computer is running at its maximum speed so it's very touchable on the keyboard so it doesn't annoy me at all and it wasn't really crazily loud neither and even the loudness it was a little bit quite on the low end uh, in terms of sound wise it was quite low it wasn't a high pitch one so that's pretty good as for the cpu running between 5 to 20 percent which is an average low to average use you're looking at 43 decibels so that's quite quiet there um, you probably would feel it's nearly silent there i would probably classify it so very quiet there for a laptop and the thermals which means the thermals on this computer is fantastic if you find this video informative or enjoyed it give it a like and if you haven't done already subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen i do try to upload a new video every tuesdays and fridays and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video